you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Hello and welcome to this edition of Coffee with Graham's NFHL season coverage on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Today's episode is brought to you by Purinata, Fabricland Winkler, and Evolve Green. In today's edition of NFHL season coverage, I'm going to be joined by two members from the league. This first one is going to be from a player of the Pena Valley Hawks, number 19, and assistant captain. Jolene McClare and I was planning on getting Jolene on the show for an interview this week to talk about not only her softball career and the softball commitment she made to Bethany Lutheran College for the fall of 2021 but her career with the Pemna Valley Hawks Bantam and U18 program and I was unable to get her on but I ended up doing an interview with her on March 3rd and the reason I was saving it up was because I didn't talk to her about hockey in that one but we're going to air this interview today with her I talked to Jolene about her softball commitment to Bethany Lutheran College why she chose softball over hockey and we also dive into her softball playing career as well so sit back relax grab your cup of joe or whatever you guys bring to enjoy these shows with you and i'll be sitting down now with number 19 of the pemna valley hawks senior forward jolene leclair on this edition of mfhl season coverage on coffee with graham on astv production You committed to Bethany or Bethany Lutheran College to play softball. Why did you choose to play softball at that university level compared to, you know, choosing hockey? Um, it was a pretty hard decision to make to choose between which sport I wanted to play, but it had to come down to which sport was best suited for me in college and softball always had that extra spark on me spark effect on me more than hockey did so i decided to take that route how excited are you to have a chance to experience some independence during your time of uh, playing softball at this Uh, uh, college i'm super excited it's something i've always wanted since i could remember um getting the opportunity to go out and play is very exciting and meeting new people and to get the opportunity to be more independent on myself rather than ha- being home with my parents is going to be a good opportunity for me. And how long were you in contact with Bethany Luther in college? Um, my coach from last year with Central actually introduced me in November to the Mankato, Mankato team. And since November 17th, I think it was. Could you speak about, I'm assuming anyways, could you? Speak about the the types of talks you've had with just the the coaching staff at Bethany Lutheran. Um, the coaching staff was very nice. Um, Dan reached out practically every week to me, just asking how I was, and asking what my thoughts were on the school and where I was with my college thoughts. And yeah, I super really liked how he approached me and made me feel like he really wanted to recruit me. So. Do you feel like the conversations that you had with the the head coach was, you know, a, a big reason? You, you think it's going to be, you know, beneficial to you when you, you start to transition to moving into the States with having a, a, a guy like that? Coaching? Yeah, I think it's going to be very good for me, too, because he really – opened up new opportunities for me and he actually has one of my coach's daughters on that team so he gave me her number and we were still in contact about the school 
and so he gave me like the inside scoop of everything and so did she and yeah that's awesome and did you have a chance to speak to you know any of like a, a majority of the players on the team or a uh, select few um a couple did reach out to me just for like the admissions part of the process because i was unsure of it because i'm from canada and they're from the u.s yeah. So just unsure of what I need to do. And just how do you feel like having those conversations with some of those players and, you know, for you, you know, once again, moving away from home, how do you feel like that is going to have an impact on you in terms of just settling in in that first year? Um, it was very relieving to have conversations with them because I was super hesitant of moving away from home, but they've made it sound like, Bethany is home to them, so I'm hoping I'm I'm pretty sure it'll be home to me too. And what would you say that you're most excited to experience during your time there? Obviously, you're gonna have some more independence. You're gonna experience the college lifestyle, and you're you're gonna be playing uh, softball at a at a Division three college level. Uh, just all those things. What would you say? you're most looking forward to out of all those things that I listed? Um, I'm really looking forward to playing ball at the high comp like at the high level uh, university and meeting new people too is very important and I'm super excited to do that. Anything you want to experience just uh, in terms of just off the diamond and in terms of just the what the what the campus is like and stuff like that um i'm super excited to study in elementary education and i know for a fact that bethany will be a good fit for me for that program so i'm super excited to jump into there too and why did you choose to go with uh studying education as your as the thing that you want to you know study throughout your time there um i was always interested in teaching people and just like giving people examples of how to do things. And I was hoping also to maybe get into some coaching like high school teams. So I figured education would probably be the best fit for me. That'd be pretty cool again to uh, coach some teams would be pretty mm -hmm. sweet. Something that I'm sure you're looking forward to. That's pretty awesome. Uh, honestly, coaching, coaching a team of kids would be fun. That'd be, that'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so in terms of you as a ball player, I, I had a chance to kind of look at look you up online about just I saw your uh, college profile, your scouting profile, and uh, it, it's listed that you're uh, your second baseman. Yeah. Yeah. So why did you choose to play second base over any other position in baseball? Well, I play I usually play. I mean, in, in softball. My yeah, apologies. I usually play yeah. wherever the coaches put me. I'm, I can play either shortstop, middle infield, or even the outfield. But I really prefer the infield because I don't, I've always liked getting hard ground balls hit to me, and the adrenaline, adrenaline, I get when I play is super exciting. And was that some of the things that were talked about between you and the coaches in terms of the the role they want you to play on this team is that they know you can play second base, but did they talk about just maybe using you in some other positions out there? Um, we haven't really talked about that. No, I just mentioned that I was a multi like sport, like I was multi position athlete and I could play wherever they want me to play. Right on. And as a ball player throughout your life, just not only playing one position, but being able to play multiple positions, how do you think that that's really helped benefit you as a ball player as you've grown over the years? Um, it's helped me a lot develop more skills because there's a lot of skills you need to play each positions. And I think it benefits a team too to have players that play multiple positions in case there's injuries and all everything. So I think it benefits pretty much. And it seems like you as a player, as an athlete, in terms of you as a ball player, you're a quick player, good with the club, uh, you got good footwork too. What would you say is, besides just you being a, you can play multiple positions, what would you say is probably the 
biggest strength of your game as a as a ball player? Um, my biggest strength would probably be my defensive play. I'm a big defense player. Um, I also do like I do support my teammates even if I'm off the field. I'm on the bench yelling and screaming, cheering on my teammates. Right on. And for for you as a batter, I saw some some clips of you. Uh, I don't know if I forget. I think it was a tournament you were playing in or something like that. But I saw some some clips of you, and it seems like you like to. Uh, you're bunting quite a bit in those yeah. in those clips. Is that kind of the the role you were playing on that uh on that team you're playing on? Yeah. Um. I was a very the coaches liked when I sacrificed bunt to move the batters in the bases, but I'm also a contact hitter. I like to just shoot for the singles or the doubles, not to shoot for the fences because you only really need to get on base and move the batters. Right on. And have you ever hit a home run in your life? Um, I haven't actually hit one over the fence, but I've hit a home run without the fences there. All right on. So uh, so that that's pretty awesome. Even though you didn't put over the fence, you showcased your speed and uh, just zoom, zoom across all, I guess. What's the word I'm trying to say? You made it all the way to home without actually hitting it over the fence, which is very yeah. impressive. Yeah. So you're you're going to be joining a Vikings team who has uh, won a championship back in 2013. They were the regular season champs in 2019. They're two and six this season, tied for third in win percentage. Just for you coming into a team like this, how do you feel like you're going to be able to make an impact at the start of your career with the Vikings? Um, I feel like I have to prove myself pretty much going on to a team that has a lot of older girls and probably more experienced than me. So I'm going to have to prove myself that I deserve to be on the team and that I'll try my best to do the best for the team. And what type of individual on the diamond is this Vikings team going to get from Jolene LeClaire? Um, They're going to get a very excited recruiter. Um, I'm super excited to start there and to probably play three years there too. And I'm a big um, team player and very excited. What about for yourself off the diamond? Um, I'm hoping to grow as a person and to become more independent and to meet more people. I think I'll grow way more as a person over there. Right on, or I should ask you this question. Uh, in terms of just the, the type of player that the, this team is getting off the diamond, what would you say the, the type of player that they're going to get? Um, a big team player, I would say. Even if they put me on the bench, I'll still be up cheering and cheering out my, ma- my teammates. And, yeah. And uh, before, before I uh, go to break, with uh, in the first time in this interview you know there's a, a lot of I guess I, I don't know if you're putting a lot of expectations on yourself to perform at that level but you said that you feel you're going to need to step up when you're done at Bethany Lutheran College with the Vikings what I know it's down the line but what are you thinking is the vision for you to in terms of just softball to what you want to accomplish when it's all said and done? Um, I'm hoping to come back to Manitoba and pursue my career in education and hopefully over the summer get to teach softball players how to play and coach teams to give back to the sport. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid connected, off grid and battery backup systems are 100% write off in the year you purchase for any company or farm. 
Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you, with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca Back here on the network with Jolene LeClaire, number 19 for the Pemna Valley Hawks U18 AAA team joining me here. And we've just been talking about Jolene's commitment to Bethany Lutheran College for the 2021, uh, fall of 2021. And she's going to be playing softball throughout her time at Bethany Lutheran College. And uh, super exciting time for her. And uh, I forgot to ask you this, just how excited was your family knowing that you you made a life-changing announcement like this. Um, they're super excited for me. They've known it for a while. I've always wanted to leave Manitoba and play ball. So they're super excited and proud of me. You haven't signed the papers yet. You have verbally committed, but just when those papers arrive at your house and you're going to be signing them uh, at some point, just how excited are you to put the, the pen to paper? I think my hands will be shaking with excitement. <laughs> right on that. That's only natural to feel that way, of course, just yeah. making a, a life-changing life changing, uh, decision like this for sure. But, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll move in now until, into your – just your playing time in softball throughout your life. You've spent five seasons playing for – Central Energy Fast Pitch, the Central Energy Fast Pitch Club, and you medaled in provincials four out of the five times that you played there. Did you guys ever end up winning winning the provincial championship? No, we always lost the gold medal game or we won bronze. We're hoping this wow. we get to win. Yeah, and so you got another crack at it this year. Yeah. Yeah, right on. And ho- hopefully that happens, especially with what, uh, what COVID's been doing to sports around uh, around Manitoba here, especially and just around Canada. But um, yeah, just a lot of success, even though you guys haven't been able to get a gold medal throughout that time. Medaling at the provincials is always a huge achievement. What do you think has been the, the biggest strengths of why you guys have been able to have so much success in medaling consistently? Um, I think it's mostly because our team is very athletic. We have no weak girls. Like, it's all strong, competitive ball players that are there to win, and they want to win. You spoke about yourself and how your defense is such a – probably the biggest strength in your game. Can you speak about just when you got to the Central Energy Fast Pitch Club, just what type of player you were coming into that team? Um, I actually came into the program – being a b-ball player I've never actually heard about um, central until I went to hitting um, club in Carmen and then Greg Petrie introduced me to central energy and I was very shy and not outgoing at all and I was scared to play in field because I was scared of the ball too but then the years passed and I grew as a player and I really like the infield now. <laughs> So you weren't playing in field at the start of your softball life? No, I was so, mostly a pitcher in b-ball and outfield. Wow. Wow, that's that's uh it's kind of crazy you you change positions like that when you when you got to that team. Do you feel like that was probably the best decision that was ever made for you to be, you know, switching switching from pitcher to playing second baseman and just other positions in the infield? Okay, so I'm I'm assuming that was just a nod, yeah. That oh was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But you know, uh, honestly, I've never played baseball in my life. I didn't play softball, but you know, uh, for you to switch from pitcher over to playing second baseman and just uh, 
just you've said you you can play any other position in the in the infield. You're a versatile player. Do you feel like having that experience of being a pitcher? I feel like you saw the the field in a different way than if you were playing in a different position in the infield. How would you say that your years of pitching has helped benefit you as a player now? Um, I think pitching really opened up like me up to the infield. Um, it was. It is a position pretty close to the batter, which kind of freaked me out a little bit. But it did help me, like, be more confident getting ground balls when it's hit to me when I'm not expecting it. So I think that really helped me. Right on. And, you know, throughout your years of developing as a player with uh, the Central Energy Fast Pitch Club, how, when would you say were the was the year where you started to see a real rise in your game? Um, I think it probably would have been my first year of U sixteen when I was in grade ten, I believe. I started to really grind softball. I would hit maybe a hundred balls like a day and just try and be my best as a player and try and compete better in the game so I can be better for the team. And what do you think was the biggest reason why you guys, you know, have never, if you could pinpoint one reason, why you guys have never been able to get over that hump of winning the golden credentials? Um, it was always our rival um, team, Smitty's from Winnipeg, that would always win gold. Um, we were always neck to neck with them, but it always they always came out and gave it their hundred ten percent with their bats, and that's what got us. They got more runs than us every game. Yeah, I've heard a lot about uh, the Smitty's team. It's if uh, if anyone you know gets into watching club softball or anything like that, you you hear that name quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, from what I've heard, it's an exceptional program and. You know, for you guys to go up toe to toe against them uh, is is definitely, definitely probably resulted in some pretty pretty fun matchups to play in. Mm-hmm. Right on, and you've had a chance to compete at two national championship games and a Western Canadian championship. And you know, what what were those experiences like? Um, nationals were very intense. Um, the best teams of every like province was there, so we had to give it our all every game, every inning. And Westerns too, it was quite difficult too. It's not, yeah, like all the teams were very good and it's hard to compete with teams you've never played before. So I think that really made us become more of a bet, like good team. And it helped us for our regular season too, to know how other teams will be like so we would compete harder and faster and how do you guys end up doing in in those national championships and also at uh the western canadian uh championship um nationals i think we got 17th one year out of 20 something teams um westerns i think we got seventh i can't remember which other the other nationals No. That's, yeah, that's all good. But yeah, just a surreal experience. I'm assuming to compete at places like that. Just do you think that those are just some moments that you'll never, you'll never forget in your lifetime of just being, I guess, just in general, that just moments you'll never forget. Yeah, it's it was a very good experience, like even off the diamond getting to travel with the teams like the teammates were very was very fun and very exciting and I don't think I'll ever forget like traveling with the teams and nationals and westerns right on right on and uh you've also it's been said you've made the NAIG team Manitoba team I'm not exactly what that is what exactly is the NAIG team Manitoba team um it's the aboriginal team Manitoba Oh, but, right on. Yeah, it was. We were supposed to have the games last year, but it got canceled due to due to COVID, so we weren't able to go out to Nova Scotia. 
That's unfortunate. And that was, so that was your first year making it last year? Yeah, and my only year. Man, that's that's unfortunate. Just how how devastated, I, I can't even imagine how devastated you were by the news because to experience something like this, I feel like it's it's once in a lifetime. And for you, it, it would have been once in a lifetime. Yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking to know that we weren't able to go and to miss out on the on the opportunity of getting scouted over there too. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, I couldn't, nobody could have done anything about it. We just had to go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, it's tough, but it seems like, yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate because that would have been an unreal experience for you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you just <clears throat> got to move on, I guess. But for in terms of the national championships and the Western Canadian championships, you know, for for you to go out there, obviously there were I'm assuming a lot of people watching. Just what was it like experience experiencing playing in front of the the crowds that you guys did? Um, it was pretty different than playing at home. Um, the crowds were way bigger also, and not knowing who was in the crowd was more um, stressful. Knowing that there was probably scouts in the in the stands probably made me play more aggressive and want to try and shine brighter. But yeah, it was pretty exciting and stressful at the same time. How do you think those experiences of competing in tournaments like that at national championships and like Westerns has helped you develop as a ball player? Um, I, it really like, opened up my perspective on how competitive girls can be and because I'm so used to playing Manitoba girls um, I got the chance to play Alberta, British Columbia, Nova Scotia and PEI girls so I think it really opened up my eyes and saw how like aggressive and competitive they can be and it pushed me to become more of a better ball player. With your years of playing uh, central energy fast pitch, you have two more years of playing with this team. Um, You know, throughout your years for you to develop into the type of player you are, just how, how thankful are you to, you know, for you that you fell into the hands of this team and you've really been able to stick with this team throughout the years that you have? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for getting the opportunity to get, to have the doors open for me to go play there. And I've grown a lot as a player with Central and I wouldn't take it back for anything. Joining me now for the third time ever on MFHL season coverage to break down the press release put out by the league on March 6th is league president Brad Kirk. And lots to talk about today, Brad. Well, we'll, we'll see how much time this uh, this runs us at. But I got to ask you the question, of course, as always, how are you doing tonight? Doing uh, doing fantastic. Thanks. It's uh, weather's warming up and uh, starting to look like spring again. So, uh and really appreciate the opportunity to, to chat. It's always uh, uh, it's great to get uh, you know have, have a league have this kind of coverage that you're getting uh, this year, and look forward to uh, to the future years as well. Yeah, for sure. And I heard it's going to be like something like plus fifteen, plus fourteen on Saturday. So it's yeah. going to be a lovely weekend here in Winnipeg, at least. But yeah, excited to always have you on, and just all the players here in the league, just to. Just to talk about, you know, their stories, stuff like this, uh, stuff like that, because the the MFHL it, it was a it was a pretty competitive league this year by the looks of it, and it sucks that the league you guys decided to shut down. But there there's good reason for sure with the uncertainty of when when uh, the health 
quarter is going to allow for, you know, league games and leaks to return. But, you know, just breaking down the press conference, you got to shut it down on March 6th. Um, you know, why was why was March 6th the day that you guys decided that it, w- it was time to call it quits for the 2020? Yeah, yeah, no, great, uh, great question. We actually, uh, we had a league meeting on the 4th, and, uh, and we actually made the call on the 4th uh, to do it. Uh, we only made it uh, public, I guess, on the 6th, and the reason why, we wanted to, um, we wanted to give the teams the opportunity to, to talk with their members, uh, with their girls. Um, we didn't want them seeing it in a press release. Uh, or seeing it on social media or anything like that. So uh, I think it's really important you have that communication with your teams and, and break that kind of news, especially the girls that, you know, this was their grade 12 year, right? This is their last year uh, playing. And, and, you know, if they if they didn't have that chance to, to chat with them on either Thursday night, um, and then, you know, you at least had Friday at some point to touch base. And, you know, if you needed to have one-on-ones, whatever it is, we wanted to give them that, that opportunity. So, it was really around uh, the ending of that order, uh, which was happening on March the 5th. So we had a meeting on the 4th where, you know what, it, it, we, we collectively just were not comfortable with the fact that games were going to suddenly, not, you know, we're going to match. We knew that they weren't going to happen in the following three weeks. And, and around the table, uh, we didn't think that it would magically go from only allowing 10 or I guess 20 if you go on both sides of the ice for, for practice to all of a sudden they wanted a game in the three weeks time. And uh, and I think it's kind of, kind of proving out. I, I highly doubt when the, when this order uh, ends uh, next week uh, and they go into the next three weeks, I, I really doubt that we'll suddenly see that indoor game is um, So I think it was a, a call, you know, the, uh, the timing was just, it just wasn't there. You know, what time wasn't in our favor. Uh, and uh, you can only drag your puck so many, for so long. On making a decision, and uh, and ultimately that's why we made it. Uh, we made it. And could you talk about how frequently you guys were having meetings before making this decision? At a at the point in time, you guys were kind of meeting to decide: are we going to roll the dice and wait a bit longer? Or are we gonna Are we gonna call it quits at this time? Yeah, we we kind of did it. Um, it was almost in a, a cadence of you know when is the order going to end? We kind of try to do it the week week before or the few days before that, that order and sort of get the feeling as to what uh, what should be allowed. And, you know, and there was, you know, even leading up to the fourth, while we didn't, you know, meet and have a formal meeting, lots of emails around as to what could a season look like. Uh, if we were allowed to play starting on the fourth, what could you do? You know, it didn't seem, you know, no one around the table thought uh, that you'd be allowed to have games in the fourth. Um, so, if you didn't have games, you know, what could a season look like uh, if you started on the 26th and uh, and played for a month to try to determine? And, and I think, you know, while you know, I think everyone had the best intentions, um, you, you, you know, I think we started to realize that only having a, a season for one month and and not every region, when you actually start talking with the different regions, who's got ice? You know, where are you going to get ice? Where are you going to prep? Um, you know, games might be a little easier. You could go to some place, but I, you know, if you're in Westman, are you really going to travel to Portage uh, or, you know, go to Brandon for practices, you know, twice a week when you're living way out in the south, you know, southwest of the province? Um, so it, uh, you know, some some teams have a, maybe a little easier time of finding practice sites, uh, but I, I think it just, it wouldn't be fair and it wouldn't be fair to, to declare a league winner uh, when not everyone was going to participate and everyone on a, on a level playing. Yeah, and just thinking before the decision was being made, I, I was thinking of this question, just thinking, you know, what were the discussions that the league were, for options that the league were discussing in terms of getting to, if they had the chance to, if somehow games were allowed to be played? What were the what were the plans for the league to decide how the regular season would work and playoff stuff like that to declare a league winner if there are any discussions like that? Yeah, no, there was a, one of the options that we had is that if you're going to have a league that could start and say at the end of March um, is not have a full season, basically have a series of round robins uh, during the first part of April. And, you know, with hopefully you could get enough games, you know, an equal number of games, you would factor in the games that you had before 
uh, when we when we shut down to sort of come up with a uh, you know a winning percentage, I suppose. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we wanted to get done by more equal to. And uh, and I know Hockey Manitoba has said you know you can go to the end of May uh, for for sanction hockey, but um, you know getting into other sports is important. Into other activities is important for for a lot of our girls. So they're into baseball, they're into track, they're into golf, they're into you know you name the activity. Um, and and so you know you need to give them that opportunity to to do that uh, and to get outside because chances are they're going to go do stuff outside first before you know. Um, so, you know, one of the ideas was get as many games you can uh, to basically determine who is first and second. And, and then you take that first and second team and they play in a best of three, you know, the last week of April. And, uh, and so really shorten it up. Uh, you don't have the three rounds of playoffs. You just can't fit it in. There's no way you can possibly fit it in. Uh, and just do something like that. Um, but I think we, you know, we, we all decided that, you know, that, you know, it may work, but without knowing for sure if games are going to be allowed on a set, you know, you, you can't make a schedule based on what happens at the board. And uh, so that's kind of where, uh, where we're at. And in one of the parts of the release that you guys put out, it was near the start. It said that was a difficult decision to make. And uh, I could imagine just you, you're calling it quits on a season that had so much promise and potential to, you know, have a great, race to to see who was first potentially you know to see maybe some big upsets in the playoffs with how competitive the league was this season just why was it such a difficult decision to make in your opinion for the league well i mean nobody ever wants to say you're done right that's part of it uh the other part is you know what everybody has the best intentions right everybody wants to get these girls to play they want to get them the exposure uh, they want to give them a, a chance to compete uh, because that's the, that's what's driving all these girls, and and you're basically telling them no, sorry, you can't. Um, so I think that was the that's the hardest part, um, you know, in making that decision is that you're just you're basically saying no, like we can't, you know, we've tried, uh, and I, and I hopefully the you know the the message was out there and clear that you know we we did try, like we did try to come up with options, you know, the teams worked with their players. Uh, to try to make this work in, in some fashion, but at the end of the day, it just um, the orders and, and you know the, the guidelines and things that we had to follow just you know weren't going to work, and and so we had to make that difficult decision. It, it wasn't it wasn't easy. It was a lot of good, healthy debate on to which which is great. You know that's a great thing about our league that it's not going to be groupthink. Um, you know there's going to be difference in opinion, and uh, but ultimately we're going to do what's best for uh, for the players. And, uh, and 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 our league and make sure that it's fair to everyone. And I could also imagine not only is it tough for just the whole league in general, but for the the senior players this year in grade twelve. Now I haven't really read into this part of the Manitoba guidelines, uh, the hockey Manitoba guidelines, if there is any section like this. But what is going to be the, is there any plan for maybe allowing an extra year for senior players to come back and play next season? Yeah, I haven't heard anything like that at this point. I mean, I I think if you were to do that, that would be a, uh, you know, I don't think that would be a hockey manager decision. That'd be a hockey Canada decision uh, to allow a U18 to, to extend up. Just because you're, you know, at the end of the day, at the U18 level, you actually are competing for a national championship. Um, and, and you can't forget that. Um, so a lot of the rules that we have to follow, um, you know, ultimately, you know, are around uh, when it comes to, you know, players that are AP, how many times you've been AP, you know, those are Hockey Canada rules. It's not our league rules. It's not Hockey Manitoba rules. And uh, because it, it gets to a national championship. So I think that's where, you know, where, you know, the Junior Women's Hockey League, uh, has been able to make, I think in the past, they, they upped the age a little bit and added, you know, a number of 21 year olds, if I recall from, from the league change a few years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, that was that lead making decision with, with, well, I guess with support for course from, from Hockey Manitoba. Uh, but, uh, I think for U18, it's got to be a uh, national, uh, to do that.
back here on MFHL season coverage with league president Brad Kirk. And we're just going to continue talking about the, just the important parts of the press release that I found that they, in the press release that they put out on March 6th. And could you take us into, I know the Avers, we've seen them on social media on their Instagram. Well, I have seen them on their social media, on their Instagram showcasing that they've been practicing, but have all the teams been able to get on ice? I know that it, it might be a bit hard with just some of the rinks taking their ice out, but could you tell us the the number of teams that have been able to get back on the ice so far? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think every team has been able to get some ice. Uh, it may not be as as uh, as consistent as what the Avros have been, uh, but I think every every team has been able to find uh, ice because um, that was one of the questions we had. You know, what, what kind of ice do we have? And, and a lot of them had ice till at least March 31st. And uh, and so uh, so they have been able to get their ice time. They haven't been able to get practices. Um, and uh, um, so so that's great. You know, at least they're at least they're doing something. Um, you know, and at this point, it depends on what games are you know may or may not happen. A lot of times, it's it's maybe to get those younger players, um, getting them on the ice and get them ready for next season, right? So you know, the, the grade twelves they're supporting uh, the younger group uh, and, and being there. So uh, so yeah, from my from my understanding, everyone has been able to get on the ice uh, at least a little bit. And you said that, to your knowledge, most teams are. Not all teams have had ice until March 31st, but just if teams aren't able to get ice after that date and they still want to go on ice, is still being provided by rinks. What are the plans for the MFHL to, you know, kind of chip in and help out with teams trying to get back on the ice? Yeah, we, we've told everybody that we're, we're willing to, you know, no different in the league. If they give me um, uh, ice lots, um, we'll make up a schedule for them. Um, and everyone has basically said, you know what, they'll they can handle it themselves. Uh, the ones that have uh, you know, uh, indicated that, so they're all willing to you know to work together and to try to find ice. You know, part of it is they don't know what's going to happen starting on the 26th if, if games are going to be allowed, and uh, and so you know they are uh, they are looking to to get their ice uh, some ice somewhere uh, and uh, and having those particular games, but. As a league, we're more than willing to, to help out and say, you know, even if if, uh, if a team doesn't have home ice anymore, right, their rink is gone and they want to play, you know, come into Winnipeg. Um, you know, we can uh, we can try to help with the, with the scheduling. Uh, and if let's say you know a team like Westman wants to play Eastman based out of uh, uh, out of Seven Oaks, for example, you know, just to get a game, you know, we'd be fully supportive of that and uh, and work with the teams to try to schedule that. So. Um, you know what? They're they're used to creating their own schedule, especially when it's uh, you know, exhibition time uh, before the season starts. You know, and, and arranging things and getting those games. So, uh, you know, they're everybody's used to doing this. This is not their first rodeo and, and, and arranging things. Uh, but uh, but again, we're we're there to to provide support uh, and, and guidance where we can. But uh, you know, some of them will just. And for right now, teams are allowed 10 players on each side of the ice. They're wearing face masks, stuff like that. Just how how do you think that, you know, you said that in, in the thing, it says if permitted after the current health order expires, the league will work closely with all teams to establish and promote exhibition play during the end of March and the April month period. Just can you kind of dive into what exactly that means? Yeah, uh, you know, part of it is just strongly encouraging teams to have games, right? Uh, you know, if we're allowed to have games, you know, get those games out there and uh, and, and have them. It's, and, it, and it's really for exposure for those girls, um, for those that, that want to continue on onto, you know, a CIS or uh, junior women's or NCAA or wherever it might be. Um, and, you know, to get that kind of exposure. Um, so, that's really where where it's around is is trying to, to to get them encourage them to get on the ice. If a team chooses not to, because um, maybe their uh, maybe the parent group um, you know doesn't want to do that. Uh, maybe the players, maybe not all of them are are fully committed because you know starting in you know, let's say April fifth they're getting into baseball. I don't know. I'm just going to go there. 
um, and you don't have enough players to uh, to have a to have a game, then uh, or exhibition game, and that's fine. I mean, you know, I I guess there's always the option you could combine two teams that only had you know half players and and have something. Um, but I think um, you know likely that might not sit very well with you know the health orders and hockey. Matter. You're getting two sort of cohorts if you want to call it that way. Suddenly intermingling. So um, uh, so I think you know. There's options there, but I guess the first is we got to find out next week if they're even allowed to have people. Yeah, for sure. And I, I've been thinking about this a lot to make it fun for teams if they're stuck playing within uh, within their cohorts, so playing within their teams, and you know, with and ten players on each side. I was thinking, you know, you got two goaltenders on each side, of, one goaltender on each side. Obviously, you have, you know. Uh, teams of maybe do a three on three tournament and maybe yeah. these teams would play in a tournament and then the winners who come out from each side would play each other in the final. Is that maybe something that the league has considered to do if that's the case? Yeah, I think going to a three on three, I don't know whether you can do a tournament. Um, and only because you know they, they don't allow multiple teams in a sort of a tournament format, you'd have to run that over. Uh, you know, individual games over different days uh, to do that kind of stuff. So um, I, I think teams will be creative with what they can do. I think right now it's, it, it's you know, first of all, can you get the games and do games? And whether it's four on four, or three on three, or five on five, uh, we don't know. But I mean, bottom line is we're not going to declare a league winner. Um, yeah. You know, that's that's clear. It's, it's you know, yeah. we want teams to get them out there to, to showcase the talent that we have. And if it's a three-on-three three format, great. Um, and you know, we could be there to to help to you know organize something that they need to organize. But it's not something we've really discussed because, like I said, we've um, we've been down been, been down this path too many times. We've tried to make plans, and the rules don't uh, aren't uh, changed into our favor. Yeah, I might have missed said the question. I think it was yeah. I meant to ask. You have a team like the Abros, where you have 10 players on each side yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't be allowed to have a three-on-three -three tournament within their team uh maybe within their own team they could. yeah just within their own players because right now uh, multi-team events are not allowed and, yeah uh, yeah so. yeah yeah so what i was what i was i guess i had to i have to restate the question say it's an avros hockey tournament and yeah. it would be 10 on each side and then you, like I said, you make teams of three on three on each side with one goaltender playing. And then the winners from those both sides would go on to play each other. So it'd be an average team and an average team against each other. Yeah. Would that be, would that be something the league would consider? Oh yeah. No, I think that'd be, that'd be great to have and, and support people doing that kind of stuff where it's basically an inner squad game, uh, but making, you know, within their own league uh, have, or within their own team, having some sort of you know, individual or, some sort of award. I think right now, the way the, the rules are, are drafted, you can't do that, right? Because individual, like those 10 players can't mix, can't mix with the other 10 players, right? You're right. trying to get this barrier. Yeah. So, you know, again, we'll see what happens in the, in the next week if they provide anything, anything more to yeah. say, hey, you can start to do that and have, you know, that sort of concept. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not anything that we've, you know, openly talked about in doing that, but I, it's a, it's a great. Idea. Well, it would be sweet if that could happen. I think it would be a lot of fun. There'd be a, I think it'd be a, you know, a fun, friendly rivalry within the teams. I think that would be awesome for sure. Yeah. So, um, you guys aren't declaring a league winner, but are awards still on the table? No, no, we're not doing. I don't think we we saw enough games, uh, to really declare any kind of a. Uh, a league winner, and and it was really there. There was a quite a gap in what different teams have played for games. Um, you know, where you get a team like I think Central Plains only had three, and uh, you know the Avros I think had seven or eight. So quite a quite a big difference. Um, so I think it, it really wouldn't be fair to to award something like that. We are doing, and, and, uh, and we've gone out to the teams uh, today actually, is we do have a scholarship. Um, we do have somebody that uh, is very supportive of our league uh, and uh, and wants to give back uh, to the league, and uh, and so they uh, so there is a scholarship that uh, that will be handed out. Um, I'm 
trying to remember if we had landed on whether it's one or two, you know, it's, I think it's like a thousand dollars. So do you do one for a thousand or do you do two for 500 uh, for, uh, you know, attending a post-secondary uh, education in, in, within Canada. And, um, and so, so that's still going to happen. Uh, I think we, we still owe that to the girls, uh, the graduating players that are moving on to, you know, whether it be, um, you know, playing uh, hockey or, or some other sport or just even, you know, getting a, a, a post-secondary education, uh, having that. So, so that, that part is to be there, but the awards themselves are hopefully, uh, hopefully okay. Well, Brad, thanks for telling us all about what's, you know, what the league's process was to call on it quits on the season and just talking about, like, I, I think that'd be awesome to award, uh, you know, a player or, you know, multiple players or how many scholarships you guys are going to give out, uh, you know, as a, as a nice reward to a, to a frustrating season, that's for sure. So I'm, I'm going to let you go now. Brad Kirk, president of the MFHL, joining me for the third time on today's show. He was joining me tonight, and it's always a pleasure, Brad. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you very much, Graham. You have a good evening. You too, Brad. Take care. And here's some info regarding some coaching spots on the Central Plains Hockey website. Just paraphrasing what was said on the website. Central Plains Minor Hockey is now accepting coaching applications for regional AAA Capitals teams for the 2021-2022 season. The applications are for the U15 AAA male and female Capitals teams as well as the U18 AAA male and female teams. The deadline for submissions is on April 15th. However, submissions will be accepted by Central Plains Minor Hockey until positions are filled. If you're interested in applying for one of the positions, visit centralplainshockey.com for more details. Moving on to women's college hockey, former Westman Wildcats forward and two-time MFHL MVP Ashton Bell sent the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs to the NCAA Women's Frozen Four semifinals with an overtime goal in Monday's 1-0 quarterfinal win over Colgate. This is Minnesota Duluth's first trip to the Final Four in over a decade. The number five Bulldogs will take on the top ranked Northeastern Huskies at 1 p.m. Central Time today for a chance to punch their ticket into Saturday's national championship game. Right after the break, I'll be back with a commitment announcement from the MFHL as well as some final words on today's edition of Coffee with Graham's MFHL season coverage here on ASTV Productions. And it's time for a MFHL University commitment. The commitment was announced on the MFHL's website on MFHLU18AAA.com. Eastman Selects goaltender Geneva Penner has committed to school at Assiniboine Community College for the fall of 2021 to play hockey. From Mitchell, Manitoba, Penner posted 15 wins, 14 losses, and a tie in 31 career total games with the Selects. Penner also had a 904 save percentage along with a 280 goals against average in her career with Eastman. This season, Penner posted a record of 1 and 4 with an 876 save percentage and a 369 goals against average along with two penalty minutes. For full information on not only Penner's commitment but all the other commitments on the MFHL, visit their website at mfhlu18aaa.com. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of MFHL season coverage here on ASTV. Special thanks to Jolene LeClaire and MFHL League President Brad Kirk for being the guests on today's show. Special thanks to you, the viewer, for tuning in today. And also a special thanks to our sponsors of Coffee with Graham and Pure Anata, Fabricland Winkler, and Evolve Green. I'll be back with another episode of MFHL season coverage next Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Time. I'll be back on the network actually before then on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time for Coffee with Graham. And I'll also be back on the network tomorrow night for another edition of The Prospect Show here on ASTV Productions. You can check it out on our Facebook at ASTV Productions or on our website at ASTVProductions.com. But until next time, guys, I've been your host, Graham Forsythe signing off now. Stay safe out there. Have a good one. And until next time, 
I'll see you later. And also be sure to check out the Coffee with Graham newscast on Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time here on ASTV.